These suck, right? But we kind of know that inherently. We buy them at the very beginning of our woodworking journeys because they're cheap, because they're readily accessible, and because when we inevitably break these teeth off because we don't know what we're doing, these blades are replaceable, so they're easy. You don't have to worry about sharpening. But nobody's out here saying that these are really good. They're cheaply made, they're often crooked. This one, I doubt you can see this on camera, but this one has a huge hook to one side. They're just not any good. Nor is this, this is just a bigger version of the same thing you can hear how kind of cheaply made this is. And again, that has its place when you are at the beginning of your woodworking journey and you don't wanna spend hundreds of dollars on a new dovetail saw or a saw of any kind. Having something that is cheap and easily accessible and easily fixed when you damage it is a valuable resource, but you get to a point pretty quick where you wanna move on from that. You wanna get something better. So now you've used kind of Eastern style Japanese pull saws and you go, well, those are cheap and dumb and they don't work very well. So I guess I'm gonna go with a Western style saw. And so maybe you get something like this. This is the Veritas Molded Spline Saw. This is a great saw. I've had this for several years and it's done me just fine. It's nice. Maybe you like older saws. Maybe you like to get something that's a little heavier and you have a nice brass spline on the back. This is a Spear and Jackson and it's a delightful little saw. It's cut many, many dovetails for me. But for some strange reason, this is still my favorite saw. This is my preferred dovetail saw. This is a Crown Gents saw that I spent $20 on. You've heard me talk about it in previous videos. If you've been watching my channel for a while, you know this is the one I always go to. And the question is, why? Why is this saw that is a tenth of the price of the other two my favorite saw? And the truth is, I don't really know. I don't have an answer for you, but what I do know is having this inline handle seems to help me direct this saw through the cut and I get a more accurate cut. It's just the way my body works, I don't know why. You can see the visual relationship with, from this saw to this saw. And so it got me thinking, maybe Eastern style saws don't suck at all. Now look, I am of the philosophy that a man should know and make peace with his flaws. And I understand that one of my flaws is I buy too many tools. I buy too many dovetail saws in this particular instance. I have five laid out in front of me and I use all of them, but this is of course the one I use the most. But in fairness, I haven't bought a new one in several years and so I got the itch. So that's what we're gonna do today. We are going to take a look at the saw that I bought and see if it makes a difference in my hands and allows me to cut a better joint because in theory, it's a better saw. Now, of course the saw we're talking about let me clear this schmutz out the way, is this saw. This is a saw by a maker named Mayano, who as much information as I could gather off the internet about him was still very limited, but insofar as I understand it, a master sawsmith and a master swordsmith? And I see your Schwartz is as big as mine. Who retired some years ago and his work has been sought out and this, if I recall correctly from the person I bought this from, uh, was purchased back in the 80s and has never been used, it's never been assembled. So it's brand spanking new, it just happens to be like 50 years old. So, how did I come upon a one-of-a-kind saw from a highly sought after smith, saw, saw smith, who's been retired for a couple of decades now? That's an excellent question, I'm so glad you asked. I have a buddy. Chris Giffro, who you may or may not know from his handle, Cowdog Craftworks, who you may or may not know from the t-shirts that I've worn, Cowdog AF, which I still don't know what that means, but hey, I'm not here to judge. He is something of an expert in Eastern style tools. And so I called him up one day, I said, hey buddy, I wanna get a Japanese style saw. I want it to be from a notable maker. I want it to be an experience to use. And he said, dope, dope, dope. What are you trying to cut with it? And I said, let's be real. Probably just dovetails. So most of my handsaw work these days is just dovetails. And he said, I got you. Let me call my people and see what I can do. And to his credit, he came back to me minutes later with an offer from a guy down in Texas about this saw. So I'm excited to put this thing together and actually see what it looks like. Let's open it up. Let's dissect it. Let's see if the tool steel looks better, feels better, works better. Let's see if the inline handle, the longer inline handle as opposed to my gent saw somehow feels as good in my hand. I'm very curious, so let's dive into it. 
So before we break this thing out and assemble it and start using it, let's just take a moment to appreciate the packaging because display matter, presentation matters, right? This particular saw maker destroyed this presentation. It's perfect. It's got this box that's using Google Image Translate, which what a world we live in when I can take a photo and it can translate it. Uh, this translates to written by Tomomitu Mayanu, and I know I didn't pronounce that right, but I'm doing my best, okay? So this is delightful. I don't know what type of wood this is, probably a type of cedar, uh, if I'm guessing. Maybe it's a pine, but super, super lightweight. Uh, and then he's written something else on the inside here. Now look, before I say that Google Image Translate is trash. The fact that I can take an image of some other language and it identifies and translate that language is wild. So the fact that it couldn't translate some handwritten scribe symbols on the inside of a box, I'm not gonna lose any sleep over, but I got several weird translations of this. The most common one that I got was the first day of the month, but I also got your first birthday, New Year's Eve, six days a day for a week, whatever. Like there was a lot going on there, but I imagine that this is basically something to the effect of made on the first day of the month and then whatever situation that is. So this is probably a timestamp of some kind. The display for this saw is absolutely delightful. It is, it just makes you happy to open the thing and pick it up and see it so lovingly placed in its container. Uh, and it looks delightful, it feels delightful. So, let's assemble the bloody thing, shall we? Hey, you know what's even more therapeutic than assembling a handmade dovetail saw by a master sawsmith? Therapy. And so, I wanna take a moment and talk about the sponsor of this video, BetterHelp. With 2024 still in its infancy, many of us have set goals for ourselves for the years. And if you've been following me for a while, you know that I can be something of a competitive person and so I set concrete, achievable goals for myself, like putting out 52 videos this year or hitting 100,000 subs. But what about more personal goals, more ethereal goals, goals that have more emotional, relational impact? Things like improving your relationships or learning how to not be dead inside and actually talk about your emotions. I know, I know. L listen, I tell my therapist regularly that emotions are stupid, but they do exist and we must talk about them. And learning to talk about them is an important skill, but finding a therapist can be difficult. Luckily, BetterHelp is there to make it easy. BetterHelp makes starting therapy easier and much less intimidating for a lot of people. You can choose to have sessions as a phone call, a video chat, or even messaging, whatever is most comfortable for you. To get started, you just fill out a questionnaire about what challenges you're going through and what kind of therapist you'd like, and then you'll be matched with the therapist in most cases within 48 hours. You can schedule sessions at a time that's convenient for you, and if you feel like your therapist isn't a great fit, you can switch therapists with the click of a button at no additional cost. So if you want to join the over 4 million people who've started living healthier, happier lives, Click the link in the description or go to betterhelp.com slash en curtis. Clicking that link helps support this channel and gets you 10% off your first month of BetterHelp so you can connect with the therapist and see if it helps. You know, I was about to grab this mallet to assemble this. Maybe I'll keep it here just in case I want a rubber face, but something about this doesn't feel right. It doesn't feel, it doesn't feel worthy of assembling this saw. I don't know about that. A bit of a fancier mallet. Now, Assembling an Eastern style saw is very simple. I have the saw itself and I have the handle and we're just going to drive the handle onto the saw uh, and seat it all the way down. Now this handle did come with this saw. I didn't buy a cheap handle to degrade the quality of this tool. So I'm just gonna slide it right in there. And this tang is so sharp, like way sharper than I was expecting it to be. Interesting. Now this is really just a friction fit, so this is gonna slide most of the way up, and I can't really drive that any further with my hand, and so it's time to do a little tapping. All right, so you can see that this tang, focus up, this tang is driven most of the way in, but we need to seat it all the way. And I feel like this is a real like ceremonial moment. There's something about this that feels special, even though it's not, but it feels that way. The first time, 
a, a handmade saw by a master sawsmith is assembled and ready to be used, and it's already been sitting in a box for decades, feels important somehow, right? This is just a, a pressure fit, a friction fit. We're gonna get there. Already almost there. Much closer than where we were a moment ago. Can I get like some dramatic music here? Like, I think one more whack and we're there. So it's gonna be a... I think that's it, guys. Woo! Man, look, that is incredible. So, I could be wrong. I could be wrong on this, but to my understanding, these are never assembled until the person who purchased them assembles them because you don't ship it that way, right? Like you saw how it came to me. And so this handle is made and made for a pressure fit. I could be wrong. It could be assembled on site, but just look, look at how accurately that just overhangs the edge of this handle and how you have that tiny little bit of bluing, which is really interesting to me that they leave that on there, but I don't hate that. It gives it a little bit of flavor and then you have just enough space for the signature on there or the maker stamp. That's incredible to me. That's that level, of, like that, that, just that little bit of detail brings me so much joy right off the jump. It's such a delight. And I'm curious, I don't know, again, don't know enough about uh, Eastern style saws, why the blade moves up these several inches before the cutting action starts. That's very curious to me as well. I like, it's funny, like the things that you notice now that the saw is assembled and like you're actually paying attention to how it may or may not be used. I like that the spline runs past the edge of the blade and then is both pinched and filed. It's just given a little bit of edge and so you have this really nice break in the light as this rotates around. You can see that that was done with care and affection and attention and that's really fascinating to me. This is this is a beautiful piece, guys. This really is. Uh, it is absolutely lovely to look at, but I am no tool collector. There is no reason for me to collect tools. I have reason to use tools, and that is what this thing was made to do. And so, we're gonna do just that. So what I've got here, just a couple of pieces of poplar I'm gonna mill up and make sure they're flat and square and the same width, and then, we're just gonna cut some dovetails because I have to answer the question, does spending $500 on a saw make me a better woodworker? There's only one way to find out, so cue the music. got two pieces of wood, we are going to make the corner of a drawer right now. So I've got a little bit of a thicker one, which is gonna act as my drawer front, and I've got a thinner one that's gonna act as my drawer side. We're gonna cut some tails in this piece and some pins in this piece. This is gonna be a pretty, you know, rough and tumble, quick layout. I'm not too worried about the quality of the joint so much as the experience of making the joint, if that makes sense. What I mean is, I'm not trying to show the superiority of this tool by cutting, you know, a super fancy inlaid houndstooth dovetail. Like that's not the point. The point is, can I get an accurate cut, a clean cut, and can I be more efficient? Does it feel right in my hand to use this saw the way that using this saw just seems to feel righter, if you will, than a pistol grip or a D-handled saw like the other ones I have. That's the point. I think I'm just gonna go through the process and then talk about the experience of the use of the saw. So let's do that. Quick little hot tip for you. If you're working on one side of your vise and you're getting a lot of racking, meaning that this side is pinching, leaving this side loose, you can just take a little off cut from the board that you already milled up, super glue an end block on the top there, pop it in your vise, and eliminate any racking. Solid as a rock. It's the moment of truth. Let's break this thing in. I feel a weird responsibility to this tool 
to be a good steward of it, to make sure that it lives a good life. So let's see if we can't break it in with some proper dovetails. Very briefly on the joint itself. I don't want to focus on this. I want to focus on the saw, but a couple of quick things to note uh, with the process of using the saw. I found it really easy to set the saw in the knife wall or the score line from the marking gauge from this bad boy. Uh, and I, I think that's probably due to the thin kerf, to the thin nature of that steel. It just sat right in there really nicely. Uh, and two of these walls are right off the saw and the other ones were perfect. They were just angled slightly. So usually I leave a little bit of meat to pair back there, but for some reason with this saw, it worked really, really nicely in that regard. That was the biggest thing. I did really enjoy the ergonomics of being able to have my finger pointed, which is what I do with my gent saw, but being able to feel that handle kind of coming out here for some reason made it more comfortable to, to make these cuts. And I got great results, you know? I mean, that's, I don't know what time it is. I think that probably took me 20 to 25 minutes to make that joint and uh, it looks good, it feels good. I'm very happy with that. So as far as using the saw to make the joint and how it actually affects the joint assembly, the joint cutting, etc., so far, 10 out of 10. All right. Let's talk about it now. Basically, is this thing worth it? We'll do this rapid fire Q&A style, so here we go. How's the quality of the cut? The quality of cut is really actually far better than I expected it to be. I expected it to be basically on par with a standard Western style, but I think it has to do with the amount and orientation of the teeth. This is a much finer tooth, which is what I prefer in a dovetail saw. Most dovetail saws now are around 14 TPI. I prefer a 20. I don't know what the TPI is on this, but it's probably about that if I'm judging against my other uh, gent saw, which is about 20. Uh, so the quality of cut therefore is exceptional. It's beautiful, it's wonderful, love that. How easy is it to use? This thing is brilliant to use, honestly. Like the, the, the feel, the control is just the same as this tool. The reason I like this tool particularly because it's just a little turn of the wrist and the way I hold it makes me feel like I can keep it in line. This is much the same. I was kind of holding it with a finger out here. And I think the extra length of this handle actually allows me to pay more attention to how my arm is acting like a piston and running straight back and forth. So I really do like that. But that's all personal feel. Don't take my word for that. If you've never used a straight handled saw before, then I suggest you use one, a friend's, at a show, something like that before you purchase one. Was it pleasant to use? I, this is where I think it really blows away the competition. I think this is maybe the most pleasant saw I've ever used uh, because it does a couple of things really well. Number one, it cuts fast, which we're gonna take sharpness out of this equation because anytime you buy a new saw, it's gonna be sharp and it's gonna feel better than your old saws, which have 7,000 miles of dovetails on them and you've never sharpened them. So we're gonna take that out of the equation. But what I really liked about this is it starts soft. So what I usually do 
on my Western style saws is what's called a progressive rake. You don't really need to worry about that for the sake of this video, but what you do need to know is that makes starting the cut much easier and then it can be more aggressive towards the back end of the cut. This doesn't have that, but it was just as easy, if not easier, to start the cut. So I really did like that. And even though it was easy to start the cut, it felt light, it was nice to use, it still cut aggressively and I cut those tails in just a couple of swipes, which was really nice and makes for more accurate cuts because the less cuts you take, the less likely you are, the less, the less strokes you take, I suppose is the way to say that, then the less likely you are to actually impart a curve or a wrong angle in there. It's more likely to follow the actual path of the blade. So for pleasantry of use, for the, the pleasant experience of the use, this gets an 11 out of 10. Now for the two most important questions of this video, does this saw make me a better woodworker? No. If you're bad at woodworking, you're just gonna be bad at woodworking with an expensive saw. However, I will say this, the thing that makes you good at woodworking is practice and experience, of course. And so if you have a really nice saw, that's probably going to entice you to work more. That's probably going to make it a more pleasant experience for you to practice, therefore helping you to get better faster. You can do that for 20 bucks. I'm just saying. And the most important question of this video, is it worth the money? Oh, that's a tricky one. That's a real tricky one because in reality, no. <gasps> but on that same level, like the things that I make aren't worth the money that the clients pay me to make them. They could just be more functional, more utilitarian and go buy furniture from Ikea. But that's not the point of the thing, is it, right? Like. The thing doing the thing that you need it to do is part of the equation, but it's not the whole thing. And this being a brilliantly made tool makes the experience of making better for me. I think that's worth something. I think it's also worth supporting artists, makers, craftspeople around the world to create objects that are just somehow imbued with something more special than what you get from a mass-produced tool. So, so it's hard to say because it's not, but it is. I would say if you have the money to spend on it and it's not going to negatively impact your ability to live your life and make objects, then yeah, it's worth the money. It's a delight. I will have this thing for the rest of my life and I'm gonna tell you right now, this is probably going to become my go-to dovetail saw. It just, I can, I can sense it in my bones. If you don't have $500 to spend on a saw and for the majority of my life I didn't, then it's absolutely not worth the money. That's where we stand on that. It depends. So friends, that's that this week. I like, this is truly, this is an absolute delight and I need to figure out how to display this, how, how to store it. You know, you saw in the other ones that I had kind of drilled a hole through here and hung it up on the wall, but of course I'm not gonna do that with this one, but that's for later. For now, I hope this was helpful. I know it was a little bit different. It's kind of an exploration in something that just a brief few years ago, I wouldn't have had the ability to explore and I don't take that lightly. So I hope this, this wasn't too far off the beaten path. I hope it was still accessible and useful to you but I do think the conversation about handmade tools versus mass produced tools is one worth having. Um, and for me, as a bit of an ignoramus about Eastern style tools, I think that was an interesting little, little twist in this story. A little twist, what is this hand, that's not. So any Hoosiers, for now, a couple of very brief announcements before we get out of here. Number one, I have a Patreon now, so if that's something you're interested in supporting so that I can continue to work on and grow this channel and just get better at making YouTube videos, you can check out the link down in the description. Become a part of a really sweet, vibrant community over there that I'm already very, very grateful for the, po for the folks supporting me over there. There was something else. Oh, new t-shirts. Also, go make a thing t-shirts down for sale in the links in the description below. So go check those out and support the channel that way. If that's something you're interested in, I think that's it for now. So I'm gonna get out of here. I'm gonna go do some things. I've got a cabinet to build that I'm gonna try to get done by the end of this month. And, and, friends, until next week, go make a thing and try to enjoy it. Cheers.